Damon Evans, and then we'll going to open up for questions for Coach Loxley and Damon. So uh, please feel free to chime in once Damon is done. Just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. We can kind of streamline it that way. Uh, Damon. Thanks, Seminari. First and foremost, you guys, welcome. I hope you had a wonderful tour. As you can probably imagine, we are just a, a thrill with this new facility. I'm excited for the young men uh, that will be able to utilize it on a daily basis, as well as some of our other student athletes in the athletics department. But I know that when we brought Coach Loxley back to be our head coach, one of the things that we promised him was that we would provide the necessary resources here at the University of Maryland so we can have championship success. Uh, he believes in excellence, I believe in excellence. And when you take a look at this facility here, the interesting thing about it is this. You can look right behind me. They're within 100 yards of being able to compete, practice, get rehab, all the things that they need to do to be successful. But just as important, if not more important, is the academic piece of all of this, because we'll be renovating the first floor of Gossett and turning that into an academic facility for all of our student athletes. So whether it's rehab, taping, if they want to rela uh, relax, this is a first class, first rate facility. And I couldn't be more proud of the individuals who work so hard to put this together. I want to give a shout out to Josh Kaplan, who heads up our facilities. He did a magnificent job with some of our campus partners, being Carlo Colella, our Vice President for Administration, as well as Bill Olin. But there are a couple people who made this possible. And I'd be remiss if I did not mention those individuals. First and foremost, I want to talk about the two trailblazers for which this building is named. Uh, when you talk about Billy Jones and Daryl Hill, what they went through, they set the standard for people such as myself and Mike Loxley and a lot of our student athletes to be able to attend an institution such as the University of Maryland, as well as to be able to participate in intercollegiate athletics. So it's fitting that this building is named after those two trailblazers in Jones Hill House home of Maryland football, which we are extremely proud of and, and, and to be associated with them. But there are a couple other people I'd like to mention as well, and I'm going to mention one more, and then I'm going to let Locks mention some. But uh, I have to mention Kevin Plank. Kevin Plank, through his philanthropic efforts at this institution, a former student athlete here, a captain of the football team here at the University of Maryland, and we all know what he's done uh, with Under Armour. Without him, this would not be possible. So I, I want to thank Kevin Plank, and then last but not least, I want to thank our president, uh, Daryl Pines, who has been a big part of this, and all the people who played a role in this facility here. So thanks for being here today, and with that being said, I know lots might want to say a couple things. Sure. Um, I'm prepared, as Damon said, that, uh, that's the side, I would have to say anything. But no, I want to echo uh, Damon's sentiment about what you saw. And kind of like I told our team earlier today, uh, this isn't the, we hit the lottery and it's time for us to lay back and enjoy the fruits of hitting the lottery. This building really shows the investment that people like my boss, Damon Evans, and Josh, who did a lot of the work here, and, and President Pines. But also, you know, there's three individuals in addition to Kevin Plank, or, or four, that, that have played a paramount role in this facility. One, Barry Gossett, who uh, has been a tremendous uh, ally for, for Maryland Athletics and the university as a whole. And then there's three individuals that aren't here to necessarily see the fruits of their labor. Uh, and, and it starts with Senator Thomas V. Mike Miller, who an ardent supporter of Maryland Athletics, of our campus, and the role he's played throughout his tenure as the Senate President in helping build this campus the way it's been built uh, when we run out of the Mark Butler Tunnel, uh, Mark made a tremendous investment in, in our athletics facilities and, 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 and he isn't here to see the fruits of, of what he invested in. And then, you know, last but not least, Rich uh, Novak. You know, Rich and Laura, his wife, have made an investment in our football program. And Rich, former quarterback, former Maryland alum, so proud to be able to support a program. And so with, with those individuals, and there's a host of others, as I told our team, this is an investment that they made in us, and that as a team, this building shows excellence, which sets a standard. And so when we take the field and we run through Mark Butler's tunnel uh, to come and take the field in the shell, it's really important that our players understand 
that excellence is the standard. And we're looking forward, as I like to say, the best is ahead. We're looking forward to being able to display just that type of commitment uh, that Maryland, Damon, the university, and all of our supporters have made to give us, and I've worked at a lot of flagship universities, to give us, in my opinion, the best facility in college athletics to take a young man and send him back once he's spent time in our program to be the best version of himself. And so I can't thank the supporters enough. I can't thank, obviously, Damon and our athletic department uh, for the investment that they made in Maryland football, which to me is paramount to us and our future success. Thanks, Coach. Um, as we mentioned, any technical questions about the building, please see myself, Jason, or Josh. We can get you guys situated. But anything else you guys have for Coach or Damon, please just raise your hand and we'll, we'll get you guys situated. Any questions? Okay. Mike, the project was already underway when you came on board. Uh, did you give any input? Because it, it felt like the the cake was already in the oven by the time you got well, here. Fortunately for me, I've been selling this project for 14 years. So I, I, this isn't my first rodeo. So you know, I, I was here when they started tearing the seats out of coal and all the different uh, suggestions of what it would look like. So, uh, and I was fortunate that I was able to come in and, and add some things to it, but you know, Josh, his staff, uh, Damon, and uh, their staff did a tremendous job of bringing it all to fruition. And, and, and I was able to just make some small things that were very personal to me, which always starts being player-centric, uh, making sure that the players have the necessary things and that they, you know, I, I told our players it's a lot like when you're at, at your house and you raise kids, you want your house to be the house that they all come to. So let's make sure we have all the right things to keep our guys here at home and not out in the streets doing things that they don't need to be doing. So we try to do everything we can to be player centric with the development of this project and making sure that our players have everything in place right here inside of uh, Jones Hill House uh, to give them every chance to be successful in life. What wrinkle are you happiest to see? I'd say the I mean, locker room. I'm sure there's a lot of them, but if Yeah, I mean, the locker room to me, if you saw the faces of our players, that's where, uh, that's like the kitchen for most homes. And if you saw the reaction our players had, and, and again, having seen what we were in for the last, you know, 14 seasons as a coach here in Maryland, to see the, the their face when they ran into that locker room. Obviously, the weight room is really important for us in our development, and it, it, it has all the bells and whistles, but I was really happy uh, with the reaction that I saw out of our players when they were able to go in and see their lockers compared to what we've been in. Um, Coach, you, you obviously mentioned you know the, the length it took to, to get this project done. Uh, in, in recruiting, you, you constantly you know preach from this building would, would be there. How does it feel to finally have it able to, to show off to recruiters, especially now? With the yeah, for me, it's, uh, it was like Christmas in June. Um, I work late, and I can tell you, I've stopped through here throughout, and Josh will tell you, every chance I get to see just the, the fruits of the work that these uh, different companies that came in and did the work in here. And uh, for me, it's a dream come true to be able to see a vision that I know, like I said, I've been selling this place. I was here when we went to the Orange Bowl, and we had to practice on ice out inside, you know, outside of our practice fields. And then we had to call and beg the Washington football team to use their indoor facility to help us get ready. Well, to see this come to fruition and the vision that Maryland has, uh, this is a statement that we are serious about football, and I'm excited to be a part and lead the charge for it. Oh, sir. Yeah, thank you. Questions? David, a lot of things go into putting a project like this together. As an administrator, what, did it, what, what does it mean to you to see the school, the community, everything kind of come together the way it has? Well, you know what, I like that question because one of the, our themes here at Model is about one Maryland. It's about all of us coming together, being united. And when you see something like this come to fruition, it takes so many people to do it, from the coaching staff to the administration, student athletes, uh, the campus administration, and our donors and our fan base. So when you see it, this is the standard for Maryland. This is the standard that we have to set when we build facilities here for our student athletes. As I said earlier, we've got to provide the necessary resources to do so. And I'll tell you, I was like a, a kid at Christmas today. To be able to walk through this facility, this is a point of pride. We talk about inspiring Maryland pride, this inspires pride. Any questions? A 
lot. <laughs> no, it's a lot. It's about 149.3 million, rounded up to 150, but about 149.3 million for this uh, facility, which is significant. This total facility, this is just a piece of it, and uh, the academic side of it is going to be great as well. Wayne. Coach, does this provide you with the wow factor you were looking for for the recruiting process? Well, there's no doubt. And as I said, it's great for us to sell the vision. And that's what we've been selling here, a vision of, of what we want Maryland football to stand for. And, and Damon said it best is that this sets the standard for us as a player. I mean, uh, we talk about detail. And if you just walk through the building, which I've done, the detail that was put into it from the pride of the state flag and, 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 and the refurbished wood from parts of our state, a lot of little small intricacies were put into the thought behind it. And I take pride of being a, in being a DMV guy, uh, but this, this facility will stand up against any across the country, and as it should as a flagship university. Coach, what, it's hard to pick one. What's your favorite part uh, of what you saw the, of all this new, I hate, to, for lack of a better term, gizmos and bells and whistles. What was your, what's your favorite part? As I said, I think the locker room with the player lounge. I mean, the locker room is kind of the center, and if you walk through it, you see there's four areas to it. One leads you to, to the shell, the other leads you to the player lounge, the other leads you to a recovery and our training facility, and then obviously I, we got the biggest equipment room in the country uh, back there. But uh, I think that locker room, that, that level, that's the working area of our program, and it's all player-centric. So that whole bottom floor, where they have the ability to, to go hit all the important areas from the weight room to the equipment room to the training room. That first floor is where the excellence needs to be uh, be developed. And so that, that, that one's way more important than all the rest of the